Hello again, and I'd like to say welcome to a warm, sunny, and dry Eastern Neston Park. Well, that's what I'd like to say, but unfortunately, I can't because, as I'm sure you can see, the weather here is pretty appalling. We've had an awful lot of rain, the wind's lashing around, and it's pretty cold as well. And it's going to have a devastating effect, we think, on this final of the 1985 Lombard Tristy Kickstart Championship. For instance, an obstacle like this, which in the dry shouldn't pose any problem, a flat back where they're supposed to ride up, touch a wheel, turn and come back again. Now that's very slippery, a little bit of a lottery. Also, the ground under my feet, pretty nasty, very sticky, that's going to stick to the tyres. We've got a traffic jam over here, which in the dry really shouldn't create any problems for the riders, but in the wet, well, I'll ask my co-commentator, Jack Stites, to come in and join me, because it's going to make it a bit of a lottery, isn't it, Jack? Oh, yes, this mud is terrible. It gets in the tyres, it gets everywhere. Is there any advantage to having the different kinds of bikes uh, that they're going to be riding in this? One bike have an advantage over another? Well, every, every bike is designed to be able to do this, you know, and it's up to the rider. Um, the Honda has come out with a motor which they use, it's a four-stroke motor, and it's, everyone believes it gets better traction in conditions like this. And we've got some in the final? Three of them. Three of them. We've also got three British riders in the final. That's good news, but it is an international final. Two Belgians, three Brits, and one Swede. Let's have a word or two about some of the riders, because first of all, uh, we've got Eric Lejeune, the youngest brother of mm -hmm. the Lejeune clan. Now, he's here, he's made the final for the first time. Bit of a surprise. No, not really. He's been riding all the world rounds. Um, he's quite aggressive, and being with his brother, he's, he has to learn quite a bit. Yeah. And then we've got uh, the Swede, Johnny Anderson, the first time at Kickstart, and he's made the final. Right, he, he's also doing all the world rounds, and also an aggressive rider, and quite capable. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the British riders. There's uh, one surprise package there. Young Jeremy Cragg, just 17 years old, winner of Junior Kickstart in 1983, and he made the final, he had a clear round in one direction. Yes, he, I mean, he, he was a surprise, and he was quite good. Um, just like all the Britain riders, they're, they're known all over the world for being the best in slimy conditions, in muddy conditions. Well, it might suit them. What about uh, John Lampkin, defending champion? Who's here? Yes. Well, I mean, we saw John last year in Plus in the Heats, and we know he's about the best. Well, Steve Saunders, of course, uh, currently leading the British Championship. He's got to be in with a very good chance. Right, and Steve, you know, I've known him through the years, and he's always impressed me as being really the best in the world in the slippery conditions. Well, look forward to seeing that prediction come yes. true. But of course, they've all got to go against the great Eddie Lejeune. He's never won this championship. I can't really believe that he hasn't because he's got to be just about the finest trials rider around. He's here again. You raise his chances? Well, I mean, you've seen Eddie ride. He's also on one of the Hondas with four-stroke power. And it's, it's up to him, isn't it? But it's his younger brother, Eric, on the start line who's got to get this final underway. He'll be setting the standard. Nick Britton, the promoter, starts him off the final is on, and the first obstacle, well, it's the motorway jam. Yeah, I don't think we can say how slippery that is, but he's just really easy on the throttle, done very well. Now he comes to that flat back tipper. Once again, you need to be nice and straight. And foot down there. So so you can see there, he just puts a little throttle on, the tire slips out sideways. This final run in two directions, of course, Commu double the time, the cumulative time is what counts. Difficult object here, he has to do the whole thing, feet up from there and get out. He missed the exit, he missed the exit. Flag up, so another 20 there, very unlucky for him. Yes, all the way around this course, they need to be nice and smooth with that throttle. They give it too much, the tire spins, they go sideways. They don't give it enough, of course they don't make it. So young Eric Lejeune, just 20 from Verbier, and he drops off again there. So and this here, of course, is nice and muddy, slippery. You can see that rear tire? It just this is a limbo through. section, as you'll see. There are three of them on this bank, and it is very steep. There's a little ledge, so if you can catch this front wheel in, you should be able to drive across. There, very good. All of that feet up, and he missed the log completely, so another 20 there. That's only a route. He was allowed to put his foot down there, but all the sections are actually feet up. He's managed that on a very narrow stop box now, only three inches wide, and now a very difficult finishing section. And once again, it's really balanced right there. Balance speed. Oh, he rode it well. Nice. 
And he's through there, 159.1. And with five penalties, gives a total there of 3 minutes 39.1 for Eric Lejeune. So that's the target for this man, the Swede, Johnny Anderson, currently leading the Swedish Championship, 21 years old, from Gothenburg. Once again, he needs a nice, smooth approach. Notice how they let off the throttle as the front wheel climbs. And that just looks a rear tire to climb up. Oh, and there you can see how slippery it was. He has to go over the bonnet to make a proper exit on that section. He's done that, but he's got 20 seconds against him. Now, is he going to panic and try and race the rest? Or try and keep control? Once again, the balance part is so important here. If you keep squaring the machine... No Beautifully done. And this also, it just takes lots of balance and especially a lot of patience. I suppose we should Can't really hurry. describe it. Once he's through that gate, he's going through it now, he's missed it. He's supposed to get his front wheel on there. He now must touch all the other tops before he can leave. The aim, of course, is to do the whole thing, feet up, and keep that wheel in the air. So he's got another 20 seconds against him there. Two faults coming for the big leap. It's a heavy landing. Okay, once again, this is straight on. You can't use really much of any throttle on top of that log. You have to get nice and straight, and just a nice roll to it, and go nice and straight. A little acceleration. You see how muddy it is on the top, and he's gone. Ooh, and that was a nasty fall. And after that fall, he never really got his act together, and his total score with penalties, really a big score indeed. Five minutes, 16.9 seconds. And this is the shock finalist, Jeremy Cragg, 17 years old, from Rochdale. First of the British riders, he cleaned the heats uh, in one direction. Fabulous ride there. And the third slowest qualifier for the final. That was done very well. Getting a little power on through there. But once again, it's just being nice and smooth. Keep yourself really balanced here. See how he's able to keep himself balanced. Real good. Now the crowd love it. Now then, let's see if we can get this one done properly. In, get the wheel up, tap all five logs, keeping the wheel in the air. No, he can't. Foot down. Obviously more difficult than we thought, but when the course was set, we did see it done. So it yes, can it, be done. Yes, it has been cleaned. And I'm sure we'll see it done. The leap. Oh, and a lot of distance there. Well controlled on the landing. But this next log, I mean, it's got to have the riders really nervous. I mean, everyone's fallen off so far, and most of them have done it right. He's made it. He's now to the limbo section. Okay, every time he keeps that rear wheel locked, it's going to go sideways, unless he's very straight. But he can use it for his advantage or disadvantage. Now this guy really is a surprise package. Well, we knew he could ride when he won the junior. Oh, foot down, he slid away. So a 20 penalty there. Okay, he's man. doing well though. He's still only two penalties at this stage of the course. So he's got to go up through the limbo pole. The marshal's just telling him he's missed the section of the course. That is part of the route he's got to go through. But in spite of all his best efforts, he made an absolute sow's ear of the rest of the course and ended up with a huge total time of 5.19.1. Well, knowing what's gone before, defending champion John Lampkin must really now be very worried about his attempt to defend his title. The rain now beginning to come down again. Not going to make any sections any easier, and we've already seen how hard it is, but that's beautiful riding. Once again, if they have to be very smooth. And of course, keep your balance. See how both, look that, both tires sliding, but keep yourself centered. He's got some style, hasn't he, Jack? He's like, oh, very smooth, and I mean, it's what I want to see. I mean, make the course look easy. And this Just is how it, nice it ought to be done. Oh, he's down. How unfortunate. Very good attempt, but he still gets a 20-second penalty. Oh, he caught the top of that. He's got a 20 on the leap. He didn't get high enough. We've seen this can be done. His foot down and 